Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we're going to be talking about what happens if you bring the Saint Denis vampire to the tiny church outside of La Kay in Red Dead Redemption 2. So I saw this post by a user Lukey here on the Red Dead Mystery subreddit where they actually tried this experiment out for themselves, getting the Saint Denis vampire in the tiny church. And something very spooky happened when they did that, which is something we'll explain as we get further along in the video. So obviously, if you'd like to try this for yourself, you're going to need to get uh, the Saint Denis vampire to appear. And the only way to do that is to find all five of the secret clues or writings that he leaves scattered throughout San Denis. Now, I'm not going to be going over like the super specifics of where they're located in this video. Uh, I'll leave a more detailed post that I've made in the description. By now, I'm either assuming you know where these are by heart because I have done this so many times or you are just interested in what happens when he gets to the tiny church and less about spawning him in for yourself. So the first one is located like behind the butcher. The next one is located right next to the San Denis fence. There's also another one located uh, kind of on the outside of this bar near one of the saloons. And then the final two are located sort of in this alleyway behind the gunsmith. And those are probably the toughest because they're sort of written underneath like little door frames and hanging. So they blend in with the shadows, especially like some of the writings in red, like it's super tough to see. So if you are hunting these for yourself, number one, do them during the daytime. It's a whole lot easier. And number two, just sort of follow the step by steps that I did in this video. And you should have absolutely no problem uh, finding them for yourself. They are pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Now, once you've found all five of the vampire's clues, from there, what you're going to want to do is sleep until night. You want to make sure that 24 hours pass, and then you want to sleep until nighttime. Now, I would highly recommend that before doing any of this, you save. The vampire is a very fickle creature, and you don't want to mess this up because you really only get one shot at it. So if you are trying this for yourself, save before you spawn the vampire in because you never know what could go wrong. Now, the reason I'm talking about what could go wrong is, well, I'll actually show you. This is what happens when you meet the Sand and E vampire and you'll get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So, you found me. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Stay back for your own sake. I walk with the undead. <laughs> what, you're a vampire? I have been called many names over the centuries. Now go, or I'll feed on you too. You're a goddamn idiot. I'll suck you dry. You are the seventh. Okay, so as you guys saw there, that guy ended up charging us with a knife that he had on him. And the vampire, like the night folk and like some of the other creepy characters in game, they are one hit kills. Like if they stab you, that's it. And what I've noticed is, is that the vampire, if he kills you, will not reappear. So that's what I'm saying. And some of you guys might be experiencing this for the first time. I know the first time I came across the Sand Denis vampire, I was like, this guy's not going to hurt me. Boom, there's a knife in my neck. I'm dead. And then I had to start the whole thing over again. So save along the way. Now for this, you're going to want to lasso him. This is how we are going to ultimately try this experiment. Now, another thing that I think is particularly funny. Now, another thing that I think is particularly funny about this is the citizens and the lawmen of San Denis do not seem to care that you have a hogtied vampire on the back of your horse. They sort of just let you go through the city normally. Now, what we're going to do is we want to bring this guy to the tiny church. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, in Red Dead Redemption 2, in the swamps, there is a super tiny church, like literally the size of a small room. 
Uh, everything is shrunken down, like the pews and the seats and everything like that, the altar, everything is just a tiny version and it's located in the swamp. Now, I can only imagine that this is based off of like a real life church in Louisiana. For those of you guys that don't know, Lemoyne in Red Dead Redemption 2 is based off of the United States, Louisiana. And I'm sure that either somewhere in the bayou or the swamp, there is a really tiny church that potentially is no longer used. I'm sure it's some sort of historical reference. Now, if you're wondering why bringing the vampire to the church is significant, well, traditionally, vampires fear religious symbols. In fact, the most sacred objects most commonly used for protection against a vampire would be water blessed by a priest, which we don't have, the cross, or a crucifix. And that is what we are going to find inside of the small church. So obviously there's the religious element there, and then you've got the holy symbols there like the cross and the crucifix and stuff like that. So that's why we are bringing the vampire there because it is said to kill them and it is said to give us protection against them. Now the problem with that, as you've probably seen right now, is it's impossible to bring the vampire inside of the tiny church if you have him on your back. And the reason for that is the church door or entrance is incredibly tiny. Like you literally have to crouch in order to get inside. So there's no way you'd be able to carry someone inside of the church. So for this, we sort of have to do something kind of interesting. We almost have to lay the vampire down at the steps of the church. And then we have to go inside of the church to try and get him inside. Now, if you are attempting to do this for yourself, don't worry if it takes you a couple tries. It probably took me about five or 10 minutes in order to get this done, because if you don't get him close enough to the entrance, you can still have the option to pick him up, but nothing will happen. Arthur will sort of just like move around a little bit and he won't actually pick up the vampire. And of course, the game makes it very difficult because the game doesn't allow you to drop the vampire like super close to the entrance. Now, I kind of got lucky. One time I dropped the vampire and I walked like on top of him, like I started sprinting towards the door and that sort of like pushed him inside of the actual uh, little church, which once that happened, I was able to pick him up and you can actually grab him and this is how you get him inside. Now, once you've done that, this is when that spooky occurrence is going to happen. So what I did here is I actually dropped him at, I guess, what would be like the altar right here. I dropped him at the altar where that golden cross was, and this is when something strange happened. He literally just died. Like you can see, he's wiggling around, he's moving, he's all good inside of the church. However, the second we drop him down, he is dead. Now, a lot of people would assume, well, maybe he just hit his head. He bonked his noggin on like the little altar there. We've been dropping him around all over the place. If it was a head injury that was going to kill him, it would have happened a long time ago. So I don't think that's the case. Literally, when you drop him at the feet of this golden cross, the vampire just suddenly dies. So that is incredibly strange. And you can tell that he is dead because you can see he has dropped his ornate dagger on the ground, which you can only get if you loot him or if he is killed. So something very, very strange is going on here. And I don't know if it's because of the location we're in or if it has to do with the tiny church. Now, I've got a couple of different theories here. Number one, this is Rockstar going to some insane details that if you were able to get this special character, the vampire, inside of the church, that something like this would happen, that they would die based off of vampire lore that being inside the church with these sacred objects would kill him on the spot. That would be very detailed from Rockstar, but I'm not sure if they would go into that level of detail. The next plausible theory that makes sense is the vampire dies, if you can see my air quotes, because he's been put in an area where he physically can't escape from or maybe can't stand up. Maybe the fact that we glitched him into the tiny church is messing with like the NPC sort of function of characters like the vampire. Uh, that seems to make a little bit more sense here. However, as I was checking this out, I also noticed something else that was very weird. Even though the vampire was technically dead, if I aimed my pistol at the vampire, he would actually turn red. 
like it would be a red reticle like someone was still alive. So it was like he was dead but alive at the same time. Again, it's just so weird. And then once I actually shot the vampire, then my reticle no longer turned red when I looked over him. So again, that's why something pretty spooky is going on here at this very tiny church at the swamp in Saint Denis. I don't really know how to explain what happened here, but certainly something mysterious occurs if you bring the Saint Denis vampire on the inside. And uh, I certainly was not expecting this. Now, because this is one of my experimenting videos, of course, I wanted to see what would happen if we ended up throwing some fire bottles at the tiny church and at the vampire. Now, I know that if you shoot at the tiny church with like a pistol, you'll end up getting negative honor for that. I think that happens anytime you like to face a grave or like a religious thing in game, you get negative honor points for that. So I had already gotten that out of the way, so I wasn't too worried about that. So I wanted to see what would happen if you would just light this church on fire. So we just threw a bunch of fire bottles at it and it turned into a bright glowing inferno, but outside of that, nothing really occurred. Everything was just really crispy on the inside and the outside but nothing really happened to the vampire or anything like that. So we've tried a couple of other experiments with the vampire in Red Dead Redemption 2, like what happens if you expose them to sunlight, which we know nothing happens. What happens if they get in water, nothing happens there. We've also let them go in the city, just be normal NPCs and civilians. That was kind of interesting. But I think this experiment by far today is certainly the spookiest because I'm not sure if it has something to do with the fact that we're dropping him in a church or if it's totally unrelated in the fact that it's ultra tiny and the fact that he can't get outside normally. But as always, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about our vampire mystery and what happens when you drop him inside the tiny church in Red Dead Redemption 2. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.